Hello everybody, welcome to Movie Master where we rank, review, trailer react and talk about movies and TV shows. So today we're going to be ranking all three Iron Man movies from worst to best and this will be the second to last video uploaded on Tuesday next week of 2021 and yeah hopefully um, these videos will be received well and um, hopefully they do good and um, yeah. Don't worry, these are all good videos, don't worry, nothing. don't worry, um, I'm going to try and upload as many videos as I can this year and try and change things up this year and make them different. So yeah. But yes, with that, um, I cannot wait to see what this year brings. What I, after I rank the Iron Man movies, I'll, ra I'll rank the Hulk movies, and then the Captain America, and then the Avengers ones. So yeah, slowly I'll rank all the MCU's movies. Except for the ones that are one-offs or duologies, the one-offs will get put on a separate list. Except for one-offs like The Incredible Hulk will not get put on a one-off list. They will just get put on a movie with other franchises. So when I mean ranking their movies, I'll rank them amongst the other movies they came up with. So like the Homecoming movies and Far From Home movies will not count due to the fact they were already ranked with the Spider-Man movies. Or the Age of Ultra, the first four Avengers movies will not count since they will be ranked. They will be ranked with their own video, or where they already have been ranked with their own video since um by now I filmed those two videos. Likely, well, the Incred the Incredible Hulk one and the Thor one and all that will be filmed after February sixth, but the Avengers one should be already up by now. But continuing that, let's get on. At number three is Iron Man three. Now, for the ending of the franchise, I really felt like this wasn't really a good movie. <clears throat> and this was Iron Man's last movie he ever made. Full on spin off solo. First off, this was the last Iron Man solo movie with starring Robert Downey Jr. So that meant it never really went out with the big ban. Well, in my opinion, um, it was a unique movie, but it seemed that all these movies had a big issue. The first three Phase 2 movies had a big issue. While they were coming off the very good. Aftermath of Avengers, 2012's Marvel's Avengers, the movie, not the video game. It had great ideas, with Iron Man 3 taking place in Christmas 2012, which is quite obvious, since the director, whoever it is, I forgot his name, sorry, no offense to the director, I will leave the name in the description below. Check his name out. This time it was not John Favreau in the director's seat, he was the director of the first two movies, his name will be left in the description, his name, not the um, cast, but the name. So, this time a new director directed it, and that's why you don't really see John Favreau's Happy Hogan in there. I think it was a good idea how they told this unique third part of the story, since, well, Iron Man was suffering a lot, and this, like, like Thor, Ragnarok, and Captain America Civil War had big ripple effect on the timeline. With Iron Man 3, it showed a big effect that. When Tony's house was destroyed, it showed a big effect. Because you don't see Iron Man's house anymore. He's not living in his mansion anymore. He's living up in Avengers Tower or the Avengers compound. By the end of it, he's living in the wooden, in the, in the lake house cabin. And Winter Soldier, when S.H.I.E.L.D. goes down. Shield, when S.H.I.E.L.D. go, And Winter Soldier, when S.H.I.E.L.D. Go went down, it went down permanently. It didn't come back up. When Civil War, when the Civil War ended, the Avengers have been split up, teams have been divided, some of them have been locked up in prison, some of them were on the run. So Stark had to had to defend the world all his own, on his own. Hulk was off world. Thor was off also off world looking for stones, so Stark had to deal with this by himself. And um, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, that's the biggest one that's happened. Besides Civil War, is Thor's hammer got destroyed. Thor's father died. Thor and Loki became br actual brothers. Loki became a good guy. And... Heimdall was no longer the guardian of Asgard. Um, Hela was revealed to be Thor's sister. Helen... Helen... Uh, Hela destroyed all of Thor's friends, destroyed a and um, Asgard got destroyed, and Thor lost his lady locks, and everything from then on would have changed the Thor franchise. And um, this Thor movie was directed by Taika Waititi. They directed he was the, he had to direct the movie because not that much 
fun and comedy wasn't really his basic god more brooding demeanor wasn't really working with the viewers so they had to change the way he acted in order to suit with the viewers i didn't really mind the brooding type i didn't really like him but after that movie he did become kind of likable but i did like the shakespearean version he had more of a shakespearean version which i really thought was accurate to the character in the first movie second movie he had a never really planned thor and the third one had a quite funny thor so yeah, but that will, I should be saving all this yab jabber yabba jabber for the Thor movie rankings. Let's get back to the Iron Man stuff. No offense to Thor. But never mind the point. The point is that Iron Man 3 had a big ripple effect on the MCU like all the other movies did. It doesn't matter how much of a movie, small the impact they were, it was still an impact. Like Incredible Hulk. The black ship of the MCU. Not that many people even believe it's canon. And believe me, as a person who was literally four or five, or even three, when I first saw this movie, I can accurately tell you, it's canon to the MCU. And if you don't know that, then, damn. But not everyone may know that, only hardcore MCU fans may know that. No offense to the lower MCU fans. I'm not trying to say you're inferior, but The Incredible Hulk is pretty much canon. So is Hulk 2003, which tells his origin story, so that one's also canon. And yeah. But with that, anywho, continuing on is Iron Man 2. Is at number 2, which is really weird. This is just, all these rankings are probably going to be in movie order, release order. Iron Man 2 was a childhood movie of mine. I always loved this movie. And unlike people, I will not give it a negative ranking when I rank all the MCU movies again. I will be ranking them once the, once Black Widow debuts, I will be going to see that. Either in cinemas or on Disney Plus. I would have to watch it anyway. Because I have to rank all the movies anyway. So I have to watch it. Everybody should go see Black Widow. Yeah, I'll go see Black Widow. But yeah, um, I'll be ranking all three. I'll be um ranking all the MCU movies after Black Widow and Eternals hit cinemas this year. And yeah. And um, yeah. But Iron Man 2 introduces Black Widow and S.H.I.E.L.D. The idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. more into this video. Into this film, Iron Man teased S.H.I.E.L.D. at the end of the film and throughout the film with Agent Coulson and Nick Fury. Iron Man, the Incredible Hulk teased the fact that um, Avengers might come, the Avengers initiative might be um, an actual thing. Because back in the day, this was 2008, so this was hyped up as hell. Because if you were a fan of 2008, you were overly hyped for every right reason when these movies were coming out. Iron Man 2, Incredible Hulk. Thor and Captain America and even Iron Man 1 were all prepping up for the movie that was about to come after it. Iron Man 1 was going to introduce us to this awesome universe. Th Incredible Hulk would continue, would spin off into a different movie universe and continue the story that Iron Man started off. Iron Man 2, again, will continue where we left off with Tony Stark's character and dealing with his deep dark secrets. And we would spin off to Thor to tell us of his anti guardian and then it would connect us to an old fashioned Captain America with a with a nice star, so a star on his chest, and a star on his shield that he sucker punched Hitler with. With that, that all led up into one big film, Avengers. So yeah, but this movie's basically overstuffed. It has way too many plot lines, the whole movie. The movie's crammed with way too many plot lines that merge together. D Tony's one minute, Tony's dealing with the issues with his dad. Like... His issues with his father, what he had with his father. Tony's dealing with his arc reactor. Tony's dealing with his heart condition, which is starting to kill him. The arc reactor that is keeping him alive is also poisoning him and slowly killing him. Which is a great thing for Tony, since he also has to deal with another bad thing. that Another bad, dark secret from his father's past. Ivan Vanko. Ivan Vanko is the son of Anton Vanko. Anton Vanko. Anton Venko was a co-worker on the Ark Reactor with Howard Stark, but he started selling some of this tactic illegally, so Howard Stark fired him and deported him off to Russia, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Russia. That's where he had his son Ivan, Ivan Vanko. Ivan Vanko. Sorry, I, I haven't really seen, I haven't really said his name in a long time, it felt really, feels really weird. Anywho, Ivan Vanko comes for revenge on Tony Stark, as a resort to revenge, plus it's paralleled. Father, 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 son, son, father, son, father, son versus father, son. So that's a really good idea. The movie's good. The idea of War Machine is really cool. I really loved the War Machine and 
Iron Man fight in his house. That was so dope. I always loved that scene, and I still love it to this day. But yeah, a lot of the issues that people have is that the action gets cut in with very slow scenes that really drag out the pacing of this movie. Like, you get really big, action-packed scenes like Whiplash is Iron Man. It's awesome. It's action-packed. You want to see more. But then it cuts to a very slow, long, long, over-explained scene. Then you get a fight scene between Rhodey and Natoni, bashing it out together. And then the Iron Man loses, and then it goes back to quiet moments. Big fight at the end of the movie, then goes to a more quieter moment, which is what the movie should be technically doing in, in that perspective. But yeah, a lot of the things they did is they the, the action was amazing. It was exploding. It was awesome. The only issue is that awesome action was getting cut in with very long and dragged out non-actional scenes and yeah but a lot of scenes did reference what future things would come in the mcu and if you want to find it out go to your search bar right now search canadian lad iron man 2 now i'm not going to say 0.25x speed but search up canadian lad iron man 2 search and when you find the video titled i watched iron man 2 in 0.25x speed and found these Blank new details, because I, I don't know how many details he found in each video. It's normally very different. But watch it, and you'll find a reference to Thanos in the movie. I'm not joking. You'll find a reference to Thanos and Loki. Where you must find a reference to them. Loki, tiny bit. He says the quote, but Thanos. You'll find a big idea on Thanos. The future be bad for the MCU. But yeah, Iron Man 2 is way overstuffed with plot lines. It shows two plot lines together, and it doesn't really fit well. The action is action. But then the action gets slowed down by very long, dragged out scenes. I love doing physical exposition, like explaining it through physicalness. In a very non dirty, very non disgusting way. So, yeah. But yeah, Iron Man 2 is really not that good. A really good movie. It's decent. It's better than Iron Man 3. And it tells a good, pretty decent story. And at this time, the post credit scenes start becoming a bit more order. The first two post credit scenes tease the idea of Avengers. Whilst the post credit scene we're more used to is the Iron Man 2 teasing the idea of Thor, which will be the next movie in the lineup. And Thor teased Captain America, uh, Captain America teased Avengers, Avengers teased Iron Man 3, and so on and so forth. Or each movie will tease each other. But from I'm, from Thor Dark World or Iron Man 3, they would start teasing the, um, they would have two different post credit scenes. One to her credit scene that would tease something in the future, and another one that's more comedic, yet really funny. Like the How the Duck one and Guardians of the Galaxy. But yeah, with that, the movie's good. It does slow down some of the action with very long, dragged out scenes. It introduces us Black Widow and a War Machine and many more other characters. And I love the ending where Tony goes like that and lifts the peace sign up like that. But it's, I had to put it down much more, but he lifts it up like that. But yeah, I always loved that, and I copied that a lot when I was a kid. It's an action I always loved doing besides this, or this, or this, or this, or this. I don't know. There's just many actions I like doing, and I'm very hyped up and amped. So yeah, but with that, that's Iron Man 2 at number 2. Number 1 is kind of ironic, is Iron Man 1, or just Iron Man if you want to say. This is one of the perfect origin stories besides Spider-Man that's been told. Well, not one of the perfect ones, but it's a good origin story in the sense of it. It tells the story of Tony Stark, a billionaire playboy philanthropist, who has been kidnapped and been taken a, taken a prisoner by terrorists. And Tony realizes that his weapons he used to protect people and help them were being used to kill them and brutally murder them. With this, Tony deci decides to not develop and try and wash away the demons and bad evil of all and demons of all him and his father's watery past and bl brush it away and build himself a weapon that can help him protect the world and everything around it the iron man armor with this tony must learn selflessness compassion caring love and learn how to be a true friend and an ally this movie is really good, and the final battle is one of my favorite final battles I've ever seen, besides the Spider-Man trilogy and the Dark Knight movies. This is a very top-tier final battle. 
The final battles in the MCU are nearly always that good. This one is good. The Incredible Hulk's good. Iron Man 2 is good. Thor's good. Avengers, Ca Captain America's good. Avengers is good. All the final battles are nearly good. And yes, expect a final battle rank in every MCU movie up to that point in the future video. Yes, you are correct. I am amped up. Not in a bad way, in a good way. I'm amped up. I got a good night's sleep. Even though I didn't even get even though I went to sleep till like eight. And if you can't if I'm talking too fast, please tell me in the comments below. It's a real issue. I'm trying to learn how to fix it, but yeah. Back onto the subject. This movie is awesome. It's a legendary movie in my opinion. It's one of my favorite comic book movies. I love this movie. You can tell by my voice, it's one of my favorite movies. Yes, my throat aches. I was playing around the pool with my friend, and my throat's a bit croaky from swallowing a lot of water and bumping my head in a lot of water. Don't worry, it's clean water. Chlorine in there, so, yeah. But yeah, you get my point. Um, yeah. This movie's a great origin story and t tells the story of how someone from selfish billionaire philanthropist Dick can change into a very selfless, yet very knucklehead jerk. But yeah, this movie's great. It tells a great origin story. The villain's awesome, but the film does create a villain problem problem where the MCU keep killing off a lot of its villains. But some of them are satisfying, like I'd say some of them are satisfying, like Well, per se, like Um sorry. Like Thanos or other villains that have been satisfyingly killed off Hella. Satisfyingly, that was great scene to die. Satisfying. The T-1000 and Terminator. But yeah. But yeah, Iron Man is a good movie. It tells an awesome story. And this is the first ever, and obviously first ever MCU movie. Me, and anyone who's born in 2007, is actually older than the entire MCU. So, anyone before and born in 2007 and before, uh, it's older than the entire MCU. But for me and my friends and everyone who was born in 2007, it was only by a year. This only goes from January 1st of 2007 to December 31st. So from the stroke of 12, if a baby's born in December 1st, Janu I mean January 1st of 2007 and December 31st, 2007, you're officially one year older than the MCU. If you're born in 2008, you're the same age as it. If you're born in 2009, you're younger than it. It's 2010, 2011, 2012, etc, etc. You're younger than the MCU if you're born in 2009 or 8 and under. But yes, the movie is awesome. I saw this movie as a kid and then I saw Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Skip Thor, Captain America and went boom! Straight to Avengers. But yeah, um... This video was great, and I love these characters, and um, I cannot wait to see where the MCU goes, and if I'm, too, if I'm so amped up, I will see Black Widow in cinemas. With this amped upness, I'm going to keep filming all these videos, because I'm amped to the end. But yeah, um, and yeah, expect some of the Thor and Captain America movies over there. Some of them, expect some of those ones to get ranked in the future after... 6-2-21. If you know what that means. It's short day for February 6th, 2021. So it's 6-2-21. Like but anywho, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss any movie masterful content. I know that wasn't really a good plan, but I'm sticking with it. And please click on the notification bell with ever. Ever this, whatever it is, yeah, whatever version it's on. So yeah, and um, make sure to comment. Tell me what's your favorite, what's your favorite MCU movie? Do you like what's your favorite Iron Man villain? Tell me in the comments below. But yeah, and um, this is the second to last video I would have filmed. I would have uploaded this on Tuesday, February second to be exact, before school. And um, I may have not gone too much on the exposition on that in the cars video. But I enjoy doing these videos from February, from this from last year to this year. I'm so happy that YouTube, my YouTube channel is finally going off. It's not it's not getting high views, but it's going off. And things will get better. I'm sure one day things will get better. 
This won't be my job. No, 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 no. I have to actually get a real job. No offense, I actually have to get a real job. I won't be growing up doing this job. I, st I work part-time for my dad, and I sometimes do chores around the house. So, so like I sometimes mow the lawns, I close the gates, I turn on my dad's TV, I take out the compost, which makes me hurl, and I do many other things. Take the dishes out, many other things, yeah, chores. So yeah, and I forgot, I've already shown this last one, the Iron Man poster. This is a digitally used photo from the Iron Man 2 movie. This is the mark, that's the mark, I'm in armor, mark 6, appeared in Iron Man 2 and Avengers. And Iron Man 3 as a background suit. I used that for two movies, and it appeared as a background suit in three. And in one movie. Oh yeah, and that's a cross poster, and a Spider-Man poster. Yeah, but I don't want to show this now. No, 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 no. This will be shown in another video. But with that, um, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. And, um, see ya. Bye.